So hi, first of all, I would like to thank all the people that helped me to be here today. Uh, I'm really, really glad to be here at Lua Workshop for presenting Typed Lua, an optional type system for Lua. Uh, so I want to start with this discussion about uh, dynamic typing versus static typing. Dynamically uh, typed languages such as Lua usually avoid static types in favor of uh, runtime type tags to be more simple and more flexible. Uh, this simplicity and flexibility allows us programmers to do faster programming and also to, it is also easier to change code according to uh, changing requirements. However, uh, dynamic typing may hide bugs that we will discover only after the code is uh, deployed. Uh, in contrast, uh, statically typed languages de detect many bugs during the development phase. And uh, they also allow better program structure. Uh, however, these languages force the programmers to think about types. And sometimes abstracting types, uh, it's not an easy task. So bringing this discussion to the uh, Lua in particular, here, this is a uh, stack traceback, an error that I got while developing type Lua. And here uh, it says uh, that there is an error at tltype.lua, but actually the error is coming from TL checker here from check function. I forgot to pass uh, an argument. So that would be great if uh, I had, could have a compiler that would tell me that instead of uh, looking the code and trying to figure out what I have done wrong. So uh, here my question, why not combining both uh, typing disciplines in the same language? And that's the purpose of Type Lua and some other programming languages like uh, TypeScript from Microsoft, basically a JavaScript version with uh, optional typing. Uh, Dart from Google, that is a new programming language that resembles uh, Smalltalk and compiles to JavaScript, it also has optional typing. And recently, the PHP version of Facebook called Hack that also has uh, optional typing. And uh, Typed Closure, uh, uh, an optional uh, typed version for Closure, and us, uh, Typed Lua. So what is Typed Lua? Uh, fancy name, an optional type system for Lua. But in practice, just a tool that allows you to combine static and dynamic typing in the same code. Uh, through optional type annotations. So even if you don't annotate the code, Typed Lua also uses a local type inference to try to deduce more specific types for uh, expressions. Uh, so Typed Lua uses these annotations and these types to provide warnings to the programmer and uh, the type checking. And after type checking, it uh, removes these annotations and generates uh, Lua code without any sugar and uh, annotations. So this Lua code has same semantics uh, that uh, an, an annotated code has. So an annotated typed Lua code is a valid Lua code. An important feature of typed Lua is uh, that we are aiming soundness meaning that if you use the only uh, static type in your code, you should be free of uh, type errors, uh, some type errors. And the purpose of this presentation is to use some examples to show how rich is uh, typed Lua to preserve some Lua idioms that we are used to. Before going into the examples, it's worth mentioning that typing Lua is a bit challenging because Although Lua is a small scripting language, it has some peculiarities like uh, variadic functions, functions with flexible arity, functions that return multiple values, 
and the use of table to code any kind of data structure. And, and also, the primary use of Lua is uh, as an embedded programming language. So this make uh, programmers sometimes diverge on how they do module systems and object models. So before designing type Lua, we tried to find some guidance and we surveyed uh, Lua files from Lua Rocks uh, repository, trying to figure out how programmers are using these Lua features, meaning how they are using tables and declaring functions and doing dynamic overloading and object-oriented programming and defining modules. So here's the first example of uh, type of Lua code. And toward this uh, presentation, I will use uh, the pink code to mean all the syntactical extensions that typed Lua introduces to Lua. So in this example, we are annotating the function ABS, uh, both on the input parameter and on the return type. And we are not annotating the function dist. So what the compiler does in this case, it uh, assigns the dynamic type any to parameters x and y from this, and uh, it can infer the return type of this because it is a local function and it's not recursive. So here uh, it is fine to subtract two uh, values of a dynamic type because Lua has uh, operator overloading for the minus operation, and also it is fine to pass a value of the dynamic type whenever we expect a, a static typing. That is the fun part of uh, mixing static and dynamic typing. Um, so before presenting the other examples, I would like to show you the optional type annotations that are available that we can use on uh, declaring locals and uh, declaring functions. So we can annotate using a type uh, actually, a primary type that can be knowable. And the primary type can be a literal type or a base type. So literal types are false, true, number, and string. And base types are Boolean, number, and string. Then we also have uh, the type new, the valid type that is a top type, meaning that any type is a subtype of value. The dynamic type any, uh, that's not a top type and uh, the type self for doing object-oriented programming, I will show later. And a name that uh, I will also show later that we can introduce uh, uh, types through uh, interfaces. Then we can have unions, uh, function type. Uh, function type is a map from a tuple type to a return type. A tuple type can be an empty list uh, of types, uh, meaning the type void. And uh, this uh, type list can end with an optional star, meaning that the last parameter is a variadic type. And a return type is a type or a uh, union of uh, tuples. And here, this union of tuples also can be newable, meaning that in this case, the function returns new and string for meaning uh, an error. Uh, then we also have a table type. Table type can be an empty table or uh, a hash from uh, base types or the any types to any type, or uh, it's optional, so uh, if you declare just a type, uh, it means that is uh, an array or a record type. Uh, and record types uh, can have just literals uh, mapping to types and can have an optional array part. And the this const modifier I will also explain when we introduce uh, object-oriented programming. So here, uh, a very common uh, example of Lua pr uh, function. We have uh, an optional parameter greeting that is a string or new. And usually we use the R uh, operator for giving a default value to uh, an optional parameter, so type Lua has uh, a special typing for this. And when we have uh, a t union new or t, the result of this expression would be type p, 
And in this case, uh, the result is a string. And since uh, this uh, uh, variable is local to this function and it is not assigned in another function, we let the programmer to change the type of greeting. And uh, that's the reason why we can do the concatenation at the end of the file with no error. Uh, we can also have union types in the input parameters. In this example, the parameter S2 is a union of a string or a number. And then we can use the type function to constrain this type because uh, in type Lua type is a primitive. So this means that inside the if part, S2 is type string. And in the else part, S2 is type uh, number. And outside the if, it's a string or new. So this is the type of uh, string wrap. I will not enter in details, but type Lua has two modes of operation, one strict mode and the default mode. The default mode will uh, always introduce a variadic tail to the uh, input and the return type to simulate the flexibility of Lua. And the strict mode will not introduce this to catch arity mismatch. So this is, we can also use unions uh, on the return type. This is a very common um, idiom in Lua as well. The function idiv returns uh, two numbers or new and string to denote an error. So what type Lua does in this case, when it finds uh, a union of tuples in the right hand side of a declaration, and the left-hand side of the declaration is unannotated. It stores this uh, union in a, a special environment and then assigns projections to these variables. So the type of Q is a number or a new, and the type of R is number or a string. And when we use if to constrain these types, inside the if, we will have that Q and R are both numbers. And inside the else, uh, Q is new and R is, is string. Uh, here is an example of uh, how annotating a variable that holds a record with fields first name and last name, both of type string. And uh, since records can get bigger, type Lua also has uh, interfaces as a syntax sugar for uh, these record types. So when we declare this uh, interface person, we can use it uh, thorough the code for meaning this table type that contains first name and last name. So here, line 16 has a compile time error because uh, last name is missing. And even though uh, the variable we are using on line 17, um, the order is changed of the fields, both are present. So it is fine to use just this table. Using interfaces, we can also uh, declare recursive types. Like in this example, we are declaring a type for linked lists. And uh, we are using the type element to define a function that inserts an element at the beginning of the list. Notice here that uh, we have to annotate the return type of insert because Type Lua cannot uh, infer recursive types. Um, very common idiom in Lua is to uh, create an empty table and then use field assignment to populate this table. So Type Lua is also able to uh, handle this idiom. In this case, uh, in the first line, the type of person is uh, an empty table. So since we are using the empty uh, constructor to assign um, to the variable person, this empty constructor also actually means uh, an open table. So uh, person gets this open table, and when we do field assignment on it, we can change its type to having the first name, and then field first name and last name here. This example is pretty simple, but uh, we have to keep in mind that when we are changing the uh, type of a table, we are not just changing uh, the type of this variable, but actually 
the type that this variable is pointing to. So we have to do some restrictions to make that this uh, type change is safe. And uh, these restrictions are that uh, only locals hold open tables. Uh, and we can uh, just change, uh, we just can add new fields to this open table. We cannot change fields, the type of fields that are already present in this table. And whenever we assign uh, uh, an open table to a, a variable, this variable gets uh, a closed table. And also, uh, we, can, we cannot uh, change the type of a table outside of the scope that it was declared open. So here, in this example, we illustrate this. We start the type of person as uh, an empty table. And then we assign person to bogus. Person is, uh, holds an empty table, but bogus actually gets a closed table. Uh, since person is still open, we can add first name and add last name. That's OK. But when we try to add field first name to bogus, the computer gives a an error, because if we would allow this change, we would be changing the type of bogus, but we would actually allow also the programmer to change the value that is being stored in person without changing its type. So using this idea of refining table types is the central idea to defining modules and doing object-oriented programming in type at Lua. Here is a common way of defining a module in Lua. We start declaring uh, a local value with an empty table. And then we populate this table with the functions that should be exported by the module. So when we use this module that we define it, when we do require, which is also a primitive in type at Lua, require we uh, assign this table type to uh, the variable m, which represents the type of the module myMath. So when we use this module, we get static typing. And here, uh, the most exciting example, how we can declare a class using typed Lua. Uh, we do that using set meta table, which is also uh, a primitive in typed Lua, and we use the refinement of table types. So we start declaring class shape having uh, attributes x and y, both of, ta of type number. And notice here that shape receives an open table. Then we uh, add the constructor new to this class. And here we need the const modifier to allow a single inheritance uh, if we want to for instance, overload this constructor in the future. Then, uh, inside the constructor, when we use a set meta table, with, uh, when the first parameter of set meta table, actually, the second parameter of set meta table always needs to be index, uh, underscore, underscore index with something here. And if uh, the, this table type is a subtype of this type, then the type of uh, index will be assigned to local s. Look here that uh, self is the implicit parameter uh, that came from the uh, column sugar. And self has also the type self. So the type self here in this example is this table here, but in this scope, it is closed. So we can just uh, change the attributes that this class has. Then using the same idea, we add the attribute move. And after that, we can declare also an interface to export the type of this module. 
and use uh, require to uh, to create an instance of this class, and then uh, we also can use uh, this type shape in on type annotations. So uh, another feature of Typed Lua is uh, the description files. Notice here that I did not use the pink color because this is not uh, Lua. This is uh, a Typed Lua description file. And what are they good for? Uh, the description files, they are good for giving a typed interface to external libraries that are written in C, or even to uh, modules that are written in Lua, and you don't want to convert its code to typed Lua, but you want to give uh, a static typed interface to uh, the users of your module. So here, uh, I'm giving a, uh, a typing for the LMD5 library. And uh, here is uh, the type of the user data. And then here are the functions that are exported by this module. So then we can use the same fashion using require to use this module and have a static typing on it. Using these description files, I uh, Type it the Lua standard libraries, and uh, I could use only static types for 71% of its members, but on 29% of its members, I had to rely on the dynamic type. Uh, the libraries that were kind of easy to type were string math b32 io and os, and the table module was pretty difficult to type because. I believe polymorphism uh, is needed and it's not present in Typed Lua yet. And uh, the hardest modules to type were base and coroutine. Base mostly because we have a lot of uh, dynamic functions in this module like uh, load, get meta table, and uh, whatever. And coroutine, we need a special type for coroutines, which Typed Lua also does not have yet. So to end this presentation, what are the limitations and future work for Typed Lua? Well, first, Typed Lua is a uh, work in progress. So that's the reason why I haven't released yet. And to be honest, I'm really considering in release it uh, straight to Lua 5.3. And uh, I am already uh, talking to Paul Kushenko to uh, integrate Typed Lua in Zero Brain Studio. After this is done, after the first release, next release should try to handle polymorphic functions and tables, operator overloading, coroutines, and also uh, guarantee that static typing in Typed Lua is uh, really safe. So thank you for your attention, and hope you have some time for questions. What versions of Lua do you support? Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> I forgot to mention that all these examples that I showed, uh, they compile on the current version of uh, Typed Lua compiler, and all these examples run on Lua 5.2. No 5.1. No 5.1 yet. No Lua JIT. No Lua JIT yet. Do you plan <laughs> to support Lua JIT? I'm really not sure. As I mentioned in the presentation, I'm really considering just 5.3. Uh, so even 5.2, I'm considering and skipping in the future. What is the output of typed Lua? Uh, as I mentioned in, uh, uh, in on one of the first slides, the output is uh, Lua code so without any annotations and sugars. Basically, uh, I use the abstract syntax from MetaLua with some extensions for my optional typing. So basically, I just uh, output the code that is in this uh, AST. Please make Logit compatible version uh, for okay. all of what <laughs> us heretics that converted oh, to Mike okay. Paul. I, I will consider that. Thank you. So any questions? Uh, on the example of the object-oriented uh, style, 
you use a very common idiom of, yeah, that one. Setting a table with uh, index equals self. And this creates a new table for each new object. So each object gets a new meta table with the same uh, indexed part. But uh, personally, I usually prefer to declare that that uh, table uh, at the top outside of the new uh, uh, the creator. And I as I understand, the self-typing maybe would be different. I don't know if you support it or it wouldn't matter. I don't know if it, this different style would uh, still work or if you have to work specifically. You mean you, you wouldn't have the constructor, just the... No, I mean the that uh, table that is the uh, index equal self, I usually don't use in that constructor, but okay. I do outside. Just so you, just you would put this table shape. here inside? Yeah, I create a local shape equal that blah, 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 and just below that, I say shape dot underscore underscore index equal shape, mm -hmm. just in the top. Yeah, th that would probably work, but uh, e it's difficult then to keep track of the these attributes that are that's the reason why we have the constructor here. Then it's easier to to keep track of these uh, attributes that should be set on so the class. Even if you make it work, it will be uh, kind of different work uh, specific for, for you, I mean. Pardon? Uh, so it, uh, right now it mi might not work. And even if you manage the work, it would be th because uh, type blue specifically support a different style. It wouldn't be that it's, in the end, it's logically almost the same, but the, st the style and the, the code shape is different. Okay. So okay, more questions? Can types be inferred for nested tables or what main problems you met with, uh, with implementing this kind of thing? I guess everything is stable in Lua, but uh, I guess there is, uh, there is the support of this is not complete yet. <coughs> so nested tables, type inference for nested tables. Uh, type inference for nested tables, you mean? Yeah, th actually the support is very limited because uh, when you declare interfaces, for instance, you can uh, nest interfaces, but this will always eliminate these names and change for the, the table type itself. So. It, it supports, uh, it, if it's just records, it can support nested records one inside another. Yeah, thank you. Next question. Yeah, I find very interesting the way you annotate uh, function declarations with, um, with types. Uh, I'd be very glad to uh, modify uh, my documentation parser so that we can integrate that into documentation maybe, or just show it inside. Um, my question is how exactly it's working at runtime. So I, I really understand that there can be some analysis. So when you're actually compiling, you're removing all the comments and you're uh, typing, uh, checking that every call is using the right types. That's yes, right. that's right. You got it. And then once this is done, you generate some kind of Lua file that's... A Lua file that is the same file you pass it through the compiler, but without any sugars and uh, uh, the annotations. So no runtime overhead? No so runtime overhead, yes. Excellent. What's the compile time overhead? <laughs> uh, now it's, uh, it's not, not big also. So, so it could be possible... Um, to use your tool to, to create a file that has the types that could be uh, installed along uh, the... I'm thinking Lua rocks. Yes, yes, you yes. You install the pure Lua file and you install the types on the other side. Exactly. You, can, you could use that for type y checking. You, you can. And you, and you can also install, install that uh, description files also. If you don't want to write to uh, convert your Lua code to type it Lua with uh, type annotations and pass through the compiler, you can use the uh, description file to give an, a statically typed interface to your module. Okay, that, that's very interesting. Uh, so um, 
maybe, I don't know, have you thought about adding the types in the comments so that you, you don't need really to read yeah, them? Yeah, this is uh, something that uh, Paul from, from Zero Brain also asked me, and uh, he, he wants to do that, but uh, I'm really not sure uh, how much overhead is introduces to yeah. to type it loose, so. No, it, it, it usually makes a big mess in the comments yeah. to do that, so you have to rename. Uh, exactly. Have the name of the variables twice, something. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, is uh, um, runtime uh, mode uh, supported? Can I use type load, Lua code and forget about the compilation step? No, not yet, not yet. It's planned? It's planned, yes. Uh, how old is type Lua project? I started this on um, 2013. Um, so one year, one year and a half now. Uh, last year in Toulouse, Fabien Fluteau, author of uh, Meta Lua, gave yeah. a talk uh, about uh, type system for Lua. Mm -hmm. Type uh, lock. Yeah, uh, is your work related? Yeah, yeah, we both use subtyping, uh, but uh, uh, tidal lock has uh, the table type is pretty different from uh, type Lua. Type Lua has a much simpler uh, table type, but uh, on the one hand, it's a simple table type, but on the other hand, the table type uh, introduced by tidal lock uh, uh, is more complex and can uh, express more things because it has some modifiers. So um, I guess uh, Fabian has a much more it's uh, in. Um, it's a different table type. Uh, it, it it has much more tricks than ours. Which one do you like more? Uh, uh, Fabian's. Actually, guess? what I like more, I I I got and put in type of Lua also. That is the ability to create an empty table and then introduce uh, fields to this table. So, it's uh, similar, but he has uh, much more power. Okay, next question. Then I have the next question. Uh, why do you use uh, custom syntax for the uh, description files and not uh, embedded there yourself in the Lua itself? Mm, uh, mainly because of the the def defini definitions of uh, user data and I. I needed at least the, the, the definition of interfaces and user data. Uh, this one's here. I, I needed but this this syntax. So but this code is almost Lua. Yeah. You, 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 you can convert it to Lua. Uh, why should I use the, the embedded DSL uh, well not to have uh, an overhead of the parser? Yeah, the, the parser is actually quite easy. Okay. Uh, just for curiosity, the parser is written in LPEG. Am I right that you plan to add some runtime validation of your types? Pardon? Can you repeat uh, the question? Do you have a runtime validation of your static types right now? No, no, no. I don't add any, any, any kind of uh, runtime oh, check. Okay. So if you have static type at code and dynamic type at code, your dynamic type of code can violate the static type of code during runtime. I don't check that. Okay, I see. Do you plan to introduce such checks? Yes, in the future I have plans. Yes. Okay, thank you. That's the reason why I call uh, type Lua optional type system because it does not introduce these runtime checks. Usually, uh, the language that introduce these runtime checks, they they call this approach gradual typing. So you may have heard. 